Indian steel mills, whether it's Steel Authority or Tata or Jindal or others, when we are buying the coal from them, then we are relying more upon how the Australians are negotiating with Japanese. Uh, it's called the JSM, Japanese Steel Mills. And the same thing we are, uh, uh, you know, we are adopting. So now we want to have separate, you know, uh, Indian steel mills to negotiate with the, with the Australians. Why should we just be following uh, what the Japanese do? So, but historically, because they were consuming a lot more and India was consuming very little, but now since India's requirements have increased over the decades and they are going to further increase, and I'm sure we're going to overtake, uh, we're going to be producing much more steel than even Japan is going to be. So we have to take uh, that uh, dominant role in uh, negotiations for, for coking coal and even thermal, so much of thermal coal is going to be coming for our meeting our energy requirements. There's a shortage of uh, <coughs> skilled manpower in Australia. So how can we have, uh, how can we help in that, in giving skilled manpower to Australia? And today, during the course of discussions, it came out that rather than we just uh, wanting to have, give skilled manpower to Australia, those skilled manpower could be producing in India and we could be exporting the, the goods to Australia, you know, very sophisticated engineering items, uh, you know, large fabrications. So, the, and Australia is completely open to that. Definitely, it is a matter of concern for uh, every industry in the mining uh, sector. And but we are hoping that the Australian government, uh, you know, would find acceptable solutions to these uh, issues.